again, rail fans. I recently got a question from a subscriber wanting to know about spring switches. What are they? What do they do? So I started searching through the distant signal archives to find an example. Well, in November of 2017, my son Rob and I went on an expedition to see CSX's Tallahassee Line, the X seaboard from Jacksonville to Chattahoochee, where it joined the X LNN to Pensacola, Mobile, and New Orleans. Well, at mid-afternoon, we got word on the radio of a meet setting up at Douglas City, a passing siding just west of Tallahassee near Quincy. It was a meet-up in dark territory. Now, what I didn't know going in was this would be the single best example of a spring switch in action that I would ever catch on video. First, I should explain the type of line this is. From Tallahassee at GF&A Junction all the way to Pensacola, this is dark territory. Non-signal dispatcher controlled track. No signals. Well, no signals except for a few special ones like the ones here at Douglas City. In the days before radio, train crews would get their instructions via line-side telephone on an open dispatcher circuit. In 2017, this was still dark territory, but some improvements had been added. One was this set of spring switches at Douglas City, Florida. Two opposing trains were headed for this siding where they would pass. The westbound Q601 would arrive first and take the siding or go in the hole in railroad vernacular. Next up was an eastbound coal train coming toward Jacksonville and eventually Palatka and the Seminole power plant there. Listen as that coal train approaches the crossing. There's nothing like the echo of a train horn surrounded by forest for miles in all directions. Two big GEs and one big EMD pulling this monster. I believe he was more than 10,000 feet long. Note what happens when the lead engine passes that signal and onto the circuit. Nothing. That's because it isn't a track circuit at all. The two aspect signal is interlocked to the switch mechanism. The signal stays green while the coal train passes because the switch remains in the normal position. Okay, this is a mainline spring switch. Installed around 1993, as CSX made the Tallahassee line ready for Amtrak's extended Sunset Limited, Los Angeles to Orlando passenger service. It's always been dark territory between Tallahassee and Pensacola. No signals or power-operated sidings. So Amtrak added some enticements to help speed things along out here in Florida's panhandle. One was the installation of self-restoring switches, spring switches. At 10 to 15 miles an hour, this loaded beast would take 4 minutes and 44 seconds just to clear the first switch at the siding. When he finally did clear, all the opposing train had to do was giddy up and go. This is Q601, daily mixed freight and chemical traffic out of Waycross, Georgia for New Orleans. Here's where the spring switch's benefit becomes really apparent. When the coal train finally releases his track authority behind him, the Q601 starts pulling toward the west end switch. When he entered the east end of the siding, he had to stop. Conductor walked up and opened the switch. Then the engineer pulled his whole train into the siding, and the conductor then closed or normaled the switch behind him, and then walked all the way back up to the head end of the train. Now here at the West End, no one will have to do anything, all thanks to the spring switch. Note the SS sign here that indicates this siding has a spring switch. 
Q601 is coming on west, and he's going to run right through that switch, even though it appears it's lined against him. Now we can see how the spring switch saves time. As the train wheels roll into the switch mechanism, the wheel flanges shove open the spring-loaded mechanism, just enough for the wheels to safely pass through out onto the main line. When the wheel set gets past the points, the switch slams shut again. This action repeats itself as each truck comes onto the switch and then off again. I'll show you this next clip without edits to give you an idea of what the different parts of the spring switch are doing. What you're seeing on the outside of the track is the signal interlocking. The linkage is moving with the switch points and changing the signal each time it does. That's why we get this crazy changing aspecting on the signal as 601 exits the siding. It doesn't matter though, it's a simple system designed to do just this. Now a crew could stop, get out, and line the switch to reverse so they could pull out of the siding without all that spring switch drama but that would defeat the time benefit that the spring switch provides, and time is very important on the railroad. Basically, the spring switch saves the crew the time of another stop and another long walk by the conductor to restore and lock up the switch behind the train when it gets clear of the siding. This device will do this each time a pair of trucks roll over it until the train is all passed. I can only imagine the extra maintenance that these require. All that prying open and slamming shut has got to loosen up stuff over time. A full 10 minutes after the lead engine first trailed through this switch, the last car clears the siding, and the signal can now rest at its normal green aspect. The spring switch only works on trailing point moves, that is, the train moving away from the skinny switch points. It won't work going head first into a switch. Now, I know I kept saying east and west when referring to train directions here, but those are the actual compass directions up there on the Tallahassee line. It's an east-west line, but the CSX timetable had it as north and south, like they do in so many places. South heading away from Jacksonville and out towards Pensacola. I thought that would be confusing, so that's why I kept saying east and west, because it is east and west. It just seemed easier. Now, when the FG&A took over the line uh, somewhere after 2019, they switched it back to east and west, I understand, which makes more sense. Well, that's how a spring switch works. I don't know if that spring switch is still in service. I haven't been up there since the Hunter Harrison bunch sold that line to the FG&A. But it was a great day out there. Uh, we had a lot of fun, and I, I will never forget that one. Don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that. I, and please write your comments in the comments section down below. I read every one of them and try to reply to as many as I possibly can. And that's where I get a lot of good ideas, like, like this one today. Um, please share this video with your friends, um, and let's make plans to meet up again soon somewhere out there on the high iron. And until we do, this is Danny Harmon, out.